Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at a rational equation. We have z squared plus 4 divided by z minus 2i and it's equal to 5 plus 6i. So we're going to be solving for z values. What else could we solve for, right? So anyways, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos where I go over basics of complex numbers and also ask a lot of questions. That's the best way to learn. Also check out my first channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this in two ways. So I'll start with the first method. The first method is basically using cross multiplication because that's pretty standard, isn't it? So we're gonna go ahead and multiply these two things. And then let's see what happens when we do z squared plus four equals five z plus six i z minus 10 i. And when we multiply these two things before I forget, let me tell you, i squared is equal to negative one, i is the imaginary unit, it can also be defined as the square root of negative one. Even though a complex number has two square roots, we consider i to be the principal square root of negative one. Again, all I go over these in uh, lecture notes. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. How do we solve this problem, right? Okay, to solve this problem, let's put everything on the same side. But before we do that, I can actually factor out a z here. So it becomes something like five plus six i multiplied by z. And I could have done that here too without distributing the whole thing. Uh, anyways, no big deal. Now let's go ahead and set it equal to that. And now we're gonna bring this over to the left-hand side, but just let's just bring the whole thing like this, okay? And then that becomes the term in the middle and then four, and then we'll bring this 10i, okay? Now what does that look like? If you said quadratic equation, you write about that. That's what it is. And quadratic equations can be solved very easily with the quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and use it. Z equals negative B. The coefficient of Z is B, remember. Plus minus the square root of B squared. When you square B or negative B, it doesn't matter because when you square, it's going to be the same thing. Minus 4AC, which is 4 times 1 times 4 plus 10I. And then we're going to simplify inside the radical. And the whole thing is divided by 2a, which is 2. So let's go ahead and simplify what's inside the radical. By the way, that's called the discriminant or delta. So delta is equal to 5 plus 6i quantity squared minus 4 times the quantity 4 plus 10i. Great. Let's go ahead and square this using the rule again. i squared is negative 1. So this is going to be 25. If you square this, you're going to get minus 36 because i squared is negative 1 again. If you multiply these two things and double the product, you're going to get 60i. Awesome. Minus 16 minus 40i. Let's simplify this. shouldn't be too hard. Well, I get a negative 11 from here, and that's a negative 27, right? 20, 40 minus 40, 60 minus 40 is 20, so that is plus 20i. Great, not so great, but you know, better than that one. So now z is gonna look like this, five plus six i plus minus the square root of negative 27 plus 20 i, which is the discriminant, and divided by two. Now, this was expected because we're dealing with complex numbers, and if you're trying to solve for z, there should be two solutions, right? Because it's quadratic. So what can you do? So you need to find this. What's the square root of this number? So that's a good question. If I didn't make any mistakes, I sometimes do. Um, you should be able to find this as a plus bi. By the way, a plus bi is very special for me because it's the name of this channel, okay? Now, to find the square root of a complex number, you can go ahead and set it equal to a plus bi because the square root of a complex number is another complex number. And we can just square both sides. And right hand side will be squared, so it's gonna look like this. And when you square, it's gonna be a squared minus b squared, that comes from i squared is negative one, plus two abi. 
Great, so that gives you a system of equations. Uh, real parts are equal, so a squared minus b squared is 27, I and mean, negative 27. 2ab is 20, which means ab is equal to 10. Now, at this point, you could probably just test some values, right? If a and b are integers, of course, we're hoping that they are, otherwise we're in big trouble. But if they are, then we should expect something like 1 and 10 maybe, but looks like a is smaller because a squared is smaller. So maybe 2 and 5, I don't think it's going to be like 5 and 2 because that's not going to give us a negative answer. But um, even this one, I don't think gives us a good answer. And I can always check that in case we made a mistake. I mean, I made a mistake. You didn't, uh, hopefully. Uh, but I don't think 2, 5 works because 4 minus 25 is not negative 27. Okay, that's problematic. Maybe I messed up somewhere here. Let's double check. Okay. Negative b plus minus the square root of, and again, with the second method, this should become more clear, and we can always go back and fix it. But I do not think we made a mistake. I don't see it at least, but let me double check real quick. Negative b plus minus b squared minus 4ac, that's a 16, uh, minus 16, 25, minus 36 is negative 11, yes. Negative 11 minus 16 is negative 20. Okay, that looks good to me so far. Maybe I'm missing something again. But anyways, let's proceed. Oh, by the way, you don't have to guess and check here because what you can do is solve this equation. So for, for example, you can isolate B, write it as 10 over A, and substitute that here. So that becomes A squared minus 100 divided by A squared equals negative 27. Now you can set A squared equal to C. You get C minus 100 divided by C equals negative 27. And then from here, you should be able to solve for C, right? Hopefully. I don't know if it's going to be good, but you should be able to solve it like this. Okay. Again, it just comes down to the same thing. Factoring 100 this time, and we're looking for... A number that would work but in this case we might be we might have some luck maybe 20 and 5 nope that's not gonna work anyways this doesn't give us a very good answer either but at least I try anyways let me continue with the second method so our second method is actually our ultimate goal right the first method is supposed to confuse you and it did confuse me I don't know why we got stuck hopefully we'll find out the idea is with the second method, there's something really cool about this problem, okay? I saved it for the second one. And it is the fact that this is factorable. Uh, in the complex world, sum of two squares, a squared plus b squared, can be factored into a plus bi. That's the name of the channel again. And it's complex conjugate, a minus bi. Great. So this helps us a great deal. We can write it as z plus 2i and z minus 2i. And that is divided by z minus 2i. And the whole thing is 5 plus 6i. Great. Now, assume that z does not equal to i because it would be problematic. Cancel these out and you end up with z plus 2i equals 5 plus 6i. And from here, z becomes 5 plus 4i, which is awesome, right? That's the only solution because 2i is not going to work. So when we solve the problem... These should be the roots of the quadratic. Let's go back and check. 5 plus 4i, let me go back here. Ta -da -da -da. 5 plus 4i, let's see what, why we have a problem. And the other one is 2i, right? So those are the roots. And they kind of check, you know why? Because when you multiply, hmm, maybe, they, maybe they do, maybe they don't. If I add them, I get 5 plus 6i. So for, from Yetta's formulas, the sum is good, but the product, I'm not sure about that. I think it's problematic. When you do the product, it's going to give you 10i plus 8i squared, which is negative 8 plus 10i. So I'm supposed to be getting negative 8 plus 10i, so this should be a negative 8. Hmm. And why would that be a negative 8? Let's go ahead and check it out. So we're supposed to multiply these two things. That's going to give me 5z, 6iz, minus 10i, Ooh, I forgot one term. Minus 12i squared, which is plus 12. There you go. That explains it. Because when you bring it over, it's going to give you a minus 8, which explains it. Exactly, right? So that's what it is. Okay, that was my mistake. I forgot to distribute. I usually rush with these problems, and I made a mistake. So that should give you the following. z squared plus 4. This one, 
this one, and at the end, you're gonna basically, instead of the four, you're gonna have a minus eight, and of course, that's gonna change a lot of things, right? Uh, we're gonna have this squared minus four times negative eight plus four i, negative eight plus 10 i, I mean, and then uh, this should be, let's see, you see, second method allows us to check our work, and let's see, okay. Now this should be better. Uh, if I do the discriminant again, 25 minus 36 plus 60i plus 32 uh, minus 40i. Okay, this would be now 57, and 57 minus uh, 36 is 21 plus 20i. Yes, this should be a perfect square, and I can quickly show you how. I think it'll be um, like um, 25 minus 4, yep, plus 20i, and then this should be like this, 5 squared plus 2i squared plus 2 times 5 times 2i. Does that make sense? In other words, this is 5 plus 2i quantity squared. So when you square root this, uh, 20 plus 21 plus 20i, that should be, oops, let's forget about all these parentheses and that unnecessary stuff. We can now solve it directly. This should be 5 plus 2i, but of course there are two square roots. The other one would be the opposite. But when you place it in, you should get the same solutions or solution because one of them is not going to be valid. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.